Hey everybody, welcome to the next video in the series. In this one, I'm gonna talk about vertical sharding, which is a really great way to scale your database, and it is also something that Vitesse supports natively. So what I'm gonna do is talk a little bit about it conceptually, gonna look at a picture, I'm gonna draw some stuff, and then we'll go in and start running some scripts that actually show an example of doing vertical sharding with Vitesse. So let's jump into the drawing board. Let's say you're in a situation where you have three tables, which is very simple, but I'm gonna use the same example from the test cluster that we're working with. So in that test cluster, there are three tables. There's C order, so this is for customer orders. There is the customer table. And then finally, there is the product table. So product, okay, cool. So these are your three tables in your little test database or maybe in a production database, but in reality, a production database would probably be much more complex. And let's say initially, you start off with a Vitesse cluster like I showed in one of the previous videos where all of these live on the same MySQL servers, right? So I'll draw a picture of a MySQL server here. So MySQL, and if you recall, in the actual clusters that we were working with before, there were replicas, right? So I'll just draw some boxes here. There was actually two replicas for this MySQL server, but all three of these tables, customer, C order, and product, lived on this one MySQL server and then were replicated out. Okay, but then let's say your data size starts to grow, right? If you are a website that's hosting you know, traffic where customers can make orders and so on, you might start to get to a point where if you're if you're getting Amazon scale or some kind of really big scale, your order table, for example, might start to have like billions of orders in it, right? And you might have millions of customers and millions of products. So you would want to start to spread this data out. So what you can do with Vitesse, and actually since we're talking Vitesse here, I will add a uh, VT gate right here. Right, and remember VT gate is how we would communicate with these MySQL instances, and there's also the VT tablets, but I'll kind of ignore that part for now. What you would wanna do is you could spin up another instance of MySQL, which again, would actually have a VT tablet. And in the case of the example that we're gonna work with here in this video, there's also gonna be replicas for these. And then you can run some commands to move the tables and the traffic from one instance to another. So in the example for this one, Initially, those three tables would all start out in this instance right here of MySQL, but we're gonna see an example of how we can move the C order table and the customer table over to a separate instance, and then the product one stays right here. So then, if you have an app server that needs to connect and get information about you know, data in these tables, it connects to the VT gate, and then if it wants to use the schema for customers and C orders, it can use that database and then VT gate will know to go to this server. And if it wants products, it will go to the other server, right? So this is essentially what we're going to do in this example. And this is an example of vertical sharding, right? It's taking entire tables and shifting them over onto different servers, right? Horizontal sharding is a little bit different and that'll come up in the next video, but this is the flow that we're gonna do with Vitesse here in this video. So the next step is to jump into the terminal and run some scripts to actually see something like this happening in action. I'm here in the terminal, and if I do an ls, again, there's a bunch of these scripts, and for this video, we're gonna be using those 201, 202, and so on scripts, because those are the ones that have examples of vertical sharding. Now, what I'm gonna do before we start executing those is actually just put some data into the tables, because remember, those tables were empty before. So I'm going to run this script that I prepared here, uh, which is gonna send a bunch of inserts into the database, and what I'm gonna do is execute this. So bash, write traffic from one to 2,000. So put 2,000 rows into each table. Actually, let's change that. Let's do 5,000 rows into each table. And then I'm gonna send this to MySQL and I can use the same parameters as before. So protocol is TCP. And what was the last one? Okay, the port was 15306, okay. So execute this, this is gonna take a little bit of time, but while it's running, one of the cool things that we can do is go look at this traffic actually hitting the primary of our database. So switching back over to here, recall that there's three tablets currently in this cluster, and the primary is what should be handling all of the write traffic, and since these are inserts, this is writing data to the database. So let's see, the primary is this one, zone one, 100, and looking over here, you can see at the end of that queries per second graph, we're actually getting a spike, right? So this is 
this primary node processing these uh, writes, so these inserts to the database. Now, if I go back to, let's say, the replica of this and click on this, this is not showing any traffic. However, this doesn't mean that data isn't getting written to this server because this server is set up to replicate all of the contents from that primary server. So stuff is getting written to this, but it's not actually the node that's responsible for processing the insert queries. So the query graph shows that nothing is happening here, even though replication is actually happening. And similar for this read-only node here, right? No traffic going on. So behind the scenes, those are getting writes. And this script is going to take a little bit longer to finish getting all of those inserts in there. But when it's finished, what we'll be able to do is look through some of those scripts that are going to be an example of doing vertical sharding. And then we'll run those and see how this affects the cluster. That script finished. Now what I can do is show you what some of these other scripts are going to do. So the 201 script here, this is the one that's going to take the longest of all of them. And this one spins up in a loop three more instances of MySQL as well as three more VT tablets. And this is going to be three more instances that we're going to, like in that picture before, move the customer order and the customer table into. So it does that. It sends a command for setting the durability policy, you wait for healthy shard and so on. And let me show you some of these other scripts before I start executing them. So this 202 script, this is one that again uses the VT control D client and it starts what we call a move tables workflow. And it's essentially saying, hey, I wanna move the tables from the commerce key space into the customer key space, this new one that I created. And I wanna move these two tables, customer and C order. So that starts the workflow. And then in 203, one of the things that's cool about Vitesse is you can start the move tables process. You can get the tables moved, but then in separate steps, you can tell it when to switch over traffic to the read-only uh, nodes and to the replica nodes. So in this step, it switches that traffic over. And then in the 204, it actually switches primary traffic over. So this would be where writes are handled. And then there's a 205 script that basically just finalizes the move tables process. So I'm gonna run the 201 script. This one is gonna take the longest of them all because it actually spins up three more instances of MySQL. So this will take a little bit. And then I'll run the 202 script to do the first phase of the move tables process. And then I can go look back in VT admin and it should actually show me these new nodes here. So we'll just wait for this to finish rather than skipping ahead because it should be done pretty soon. Okay, almost there. And any minute now, there we go. Okay, cool. So that's done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run 202, which is again, it starts that move tables process. So it did the move tables, but it hasn't actually switched any traffic over yet. So I'm gonna go back over to this panel and it should show me, it's showing me five. It's probably just a little bit out of sync there. There's probably the other that it just hasn't quite detected yet. So let me refresh here. Okay, let's see. Should be coming up soon. Sometimes this is just a little bit out of sync, right? You turn something on and then it hasn't quite synced with uh, your cluster yet. So let's go ahead and proceed and run the next two. We'll come back, it'll probably show uh, that sixth node in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 203, which this is switching the read traffic over and there's not actually any traffic hitting the database at this moment. So it's, it's not actually rerouting live any traffic, but it could do that in a real setting. Uh, and then 204, switch writes. Okay, so now I'll go back over here and it shows all of the tablets. And so now all of those phases have run except for 205, clean commerce. And so now that process is complete. So what I'm gonna do to show that the traffic now can get routed to these two different primaries is the following. So I have this read traffic script which sends select statements to each of those tables repeatedly. So I'm gonna do something similar to what I did with the write traffic script from before, except I'm gonna run a lot more of these and I'm gonna switch this to read traffic. And I also wanna make sure and send the output to dev null. That way the console doesn't get flooded with a bunch of printouts. But running this, uh, let's see, what is it not like here? Um, did I spell my script correctly? read traffic.sh. Mm, what is it not like? Oh, 
let's see, make sure that this is correct. MySQL dash u root protocol p, oh, okay. I'm gonna put a space over here. There we go, okay. So it started throwing a bunch of select statements over at the database. So now if I switch back over to viewing the cluster here, what I should be able to see is, okay, so I've got two primaries, right? This is the primary for the commerce key space, and that's where the product table lives. And then this is the primary for the customer key space, where C order and customer tables live. So if I click on this one, you can actually see that this is now receiving a whole bunch of traffic because some of those select statements are getting sent to this cluster. Whereas if I go over to the commerce primary, there's now traffic being sent to this one as well, right? So I've split up the contents of the tables or split up the tables across two different nodes, right? One of them is living on one of the primaries and then two of them are living on the other. And so this is an example of how I have vertically sharded. In this case, the tables are all really small, right? I only inserted 5,000 rows into each one, but in a much more realistic setting, right, where you have millions and billions of rows in your database, actually spreading out these tables across different MySQL instances would be super important to actually allow you to scale. Otherwise, you'll much more quickly, or you will eventually with enough scale, hit the limits of what like a single machine can realistically process, right? And another thing to note here too is I only have one VT gate in a real system. You'd have several of these or many of these spun up to handle more uh, requests. All right, cool. So that is an example of how we can do vertical sharding with Vitesse. Again, very nice that Vitesse comes with these scripts to make the steps very easy to follow along with. So that'll wrap up this video. And in the next one, we'll get into horizontal sharding, which there's also scripts for, and that'll be very cool to see how all that works with Vitesse. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.